What is the most broken unit in TFT history? What if I told you it wasn't set fire from the world? No way. It wasn't 3.5 Ergo. Pure fiction. Nor was it set 7 Siphon. Not a chance. Or even any of the set 7 dragons. You're wrong. In fact, the answer will surprise you. Oh, it's not what you think. But first, we need to understand how we determine what makes a unit strong. And there are a few ways of doing that. First, we need to determine its kit in relation to its cost. For instance, five costs typically have insanely strong abilities and are designed with that in mind. So we have to remember that five costs are supposed to be strong. Second, we need to understand if it's an interaction with items or not. For instance, LeBlanc was unlocked by Shadow Blue buff, and without it, she was mediocre at best. Set four, Warwick had a reliance on an interaction between Shiv and his kit and the Divine bonus, and without it, he was fine, but he wasn't overbearingly strong. It was Shiv that unlocked his potential and turned him into the god. So if the unit requires Biss or a certain item, can they really be truly broken? Third, we need to consider its availability. Five costs are notoriously hard to get and are only accessible List late game, my side. whereas one and two costs are extremely easy, meaning that when a one cost or a two cost is significantly broken, people always try and fit it into a comp. Fourth, we need to think about the star level. What was the minimum star level required for the unit to be useful? The lower the star level, the more broken it actually is. And finally, we need to think if it's circumstantial or not. For instance, every time they cast, are they useful? Or can they be easily griefed by your opponent's positioning? Now, this is not an exhaustive list by any means. This is just some reasoning I've used to come up with a unit or two units. If you disagree or have any predictions, let me know in the comments. And while you're there, consider liking and subscribing. I do some, well, content, basically, don't know. The first thing that comes to mind are five costs and units that have a one-hit kill ability. I think Cassandra in set 11, Elisa in set 4, Urgot in 3.5, and Tarm in set 6. While these units are exceptionally strong, they're not broken. But we'll use the method outlined before to break this down. Their kits are designed to be this way. They're supposed to be a one-hit kill, and with Tarm and Liss, they also print money and items. But that's intended and they also don't have a one-hit kill ability, they just do a lot of damage to one unit and CC them. What makes these units really strong is that they didn't actually need items to be useful, meaning that you could plop them in and see results. What really lets them down is their availability. Being five costs, they're extremely hard to come by, so they lose a few points for that. But they do make up for that by being incredibly useful as a one star and game winning as a two star. But some of them, in particular Lee Sin and Urgot, are incredibly griefed by positioning, where you can put a bait unit and they lose a lot of value, and also hard countered by QSS. So sorry Lee Sin, Urgot, Latandra and Tom, you're just not broken enough. And there are some insanely strong units, such as 3 and 3.5 Aurelian Soul, which featured a mana burn effect and a ton of damage, also giving rise to the notorious Peeba comp. The problem with Aurelian Soul is, again, its accessibility, but it's also its reliance on special items, so I can't include it. Sorry Aurelian, you're out. Now you might be thinking Zed, a set 2 Zed. We've all seen the videos and we all know how strong he was. But Zed had an over-reliance from Redemption and other Biss items, and fell to the same problems as the other 5 costs, with availability, and he was kind of designed to be very strong, so sorry Zed. Not today. And then I do want to talk about Pantheon because Pantheon might be the strongest unit we've seen that's a five cost. Like you built tank items on him, you built AP items on him, and he could either tank everything or kill everything. It depended on your flavor of the day. But either way, yeah, he is the strongest five cost. Probably the strongest unit in terms of raw power but not the most broken unit we've ever seen. And what about the set seven dragons? You know, the epitome of broken units. Siphon, Shiyou, Deja, Aurelian Soul, Shivana, Idas, and El Shin. Also, could we just take a minute to appreciate that set seven had seven dragons in it? I mean, except for the most important one of all of them. First thing we need to think about is their prices. They were expensive. Even though they were unquestionably and unreasonably strong, their price honestly justified their strength. 
Let's try dropping the star level. What about four costs? I oh, know the, the dragons were kind of four costs, but they didn't cost four gold. Well, there have been some strong contenders for the four costs, but they all require at least three items, and for those items to be biz, for it to be strong. Just like, if you look at set four Warwick, he needed Shiv, QSS, and Titans to really be that war weak problem. And set one Karthus, well, he needed three items to one shot people. Otherwise, he just didn't do enough damage. And every other four cost that there is requires items to be useful. I can't justifiably include any of them. Okay, so let's try three cops. But we fall into the same problem as the four cost. They require certain item builds, and most of the time to be three star to be strong. Let's take the shining example Blender Nocturne. Now, while Nocturne was undoubtedly strong, he required a spatula item to hit his true peak, meaning he's just not broken enough. And while Dragon Man's and Nunu might be able to eat a three star dragon, unfortunately, it was only with a spatula. Two cards? Seth 5 had a couple of these. LeBlanc and Trundle. Well, I already mentioned LeBlanc and her reliance on Shadow Blue buff, so obviously she fails at being truly broken, but Trundle, he kind of meets every metric. His kit could turn him from a 1 to a 5 cost in the right circumstances. He didn't need his items to accomplish this, but he was a 2 cost, so you could find him extremely easily, and he would be vaguely useful even as a 1 star. Where Trundle falls down is his reliance on positioning. If your opponent uses a bait unit, he's almost completely worthless. So we've gone through every single tier, and you're probably thinking, surely the most broken unit of all time is not a one star. But I have to say, unfortunately, yes. Yes it is. While the de facto strongest unit is up for debate, I ultimately think it comes down to these two. One is my opinion, using my reasoning as before. And the other is actually most likely the strongest unit ever. But can you guess what they are? If you can't, well, then you need to subscribe to me for providing you with such educational content. First is the de facto strongest unit, set 3.5 Jarvan 4, where they refer to his patch as 10.J4. At this time, he received some insane buffs, where he received health and also pretty much all across the board more stats, going to a 40 over 80 starting mana, meaning his AoE team wide attack speed steroid could happen again and again and again. Did he require items? No. Did he require positioning? Sort of, but it was up to you to position correctly. Your opponents couldn't easily grief you. Was he available? Well, we'll let more answer this one. I think, honestly, my biggest TFT mistake of all time, if I had to pick one, and yes, enjoy your clip, TFT clips. Uh, biggest mistake of all time, I think, has to go to uh, patch 12 point J or 10 point J4, 10.14, Jarvan patch. That's probably the biggest mistake. That was set three. Set three. Not War Week? Nope. Nope, I think Jarvan was worse. I think Jarvan was worse. Jarvan was the only time we've seen all 29 copies of a one cost pulled out of the pool. <laughs> That's how bad it was. All 29 copies pulled out by a uh, 3-4, basically. Or 3-2. Did he need to be a high star level? No, not at all. A one star, he was extremely useful. Maybe toss a Warmogs in, but even that wasn't required. But... What about my interpretation of the strongest unit ever? Now this might actually surprise you because it's another set 3 champion and it's Zoe. Okay, I don't know what you're thinking, but hear me out please before you start going down into the comments saying, um, how could you even possibly think Zoe? She is terrible. Look at her in stage 2. Yes, Zoe had a terrible stage 2, but she had an incredible stage 3, stage 4, stage 5. Actually, the higher the stages went, the stronger she became. Whereas Jarvan had one patch where he was the strongest unit ever, Zoe was consistently frustrating for the entirety of set 3 and 3.5 combined. Her ability to sleep a random unit as a 1 cost is insanely broken. Is it higher variance? Yes. But for 1 gold to potentially stun a 15 gold unit is a great risk to reward ratio. She didn't need items and she was ranged so positioning was easy. 
She just existed as a 17% chance to win a fight outright because two seconds of CC in TFT is an eternity. You know, even though you didn't really need, well, I mean, you probably should play her traits, but you could just splash a Janna and a Nico and you have a strong trait web. Riot has never used that ability design ever again. And it's not hard to see why. Being able to randomly CC one unit, it just shouldn't exist. Not as a one star. Not as a one cost one star. Of course you can disagree with me and I welcome that. TFT is a wonderful game in that regard because you can have so many differing opinions and this video is just that, my opinion.